Terrorism. Just before sunrise, the city of Munich, West Germany, lay almost asleep. The 1972 Olympics had been going on for ten days already. American swimmer Mark Spitz had won seven gold medals. Seventeen-year-old Olga Corbett, the Russian gymnast, had fallen off the uneven bars, but then had earned two golds and a silver in her other competitions. Now, on the morning of September 5th, there were only four days of competition left. Inside the Olympic Village, where the athletes lived for the two weeks of the summer games, a few athletes were up, stretching, eating, worrying about the day's events. Security guards around the outside of the village saw a small group of men in sweatshirts, carrying gym bags, climbing over the fence. But for the last ten days, athletes who didn't want their coaches to know that they'd been out late at night had been climbing over the fence at all hours of the night. The guards ignored them. Less than half an hour later, the sound of shots fired from automatic weapons broke the dawn quiet. The guards ran into the village drawing their weapons. But it was too late. The men climbing the fence had broken into the rooms where the Israeli Olympic team slept. Two Israelis had already been killed. Nine more were being held hostage. The men weren't athletes at all. They belonged to a group called Black September, a new kind of revolutionary group. These men were terrorists. Instead of fighting directly against their enemies, like most of the revolutionary groups we've heard about, they fought against civilians. They carried out random, violent acts against people who weren't involved in governments or armies. Terrorists set out to get what they wanted, not by defeating an enemy army, but by creating so much terror among the people of a country that the people would force their government to do what the terrorists wanted. Black September was a group that had broken off from yet another terrorist group, the Palestine Liberation Organization, or PLO. Both groups wanted the same thing. Israel should get out of the land that had once belonged to Arabs. There were eight Black September terrorists in the Munich Olympic Village. They threatened to kill their nine Israeli hostages unless 200 Arab guerrilla fighters, taken prisoner by the Israeli army, were released from Israeli prison. But the Israeli government would not even listen to the terrorist demands. The German government, desperate to end this Olympic nightmare, asked other Arab countries if they would talk to the terrorists. They all refused. Finally, the Germans offered to fly the Black September terrorists and the Israeli hostages out of Munich to anywhere the terrorists wanted. The terrorists agreed. But when they stepped out to walk to the airplane that the Germans had provided, German police opened fire on them. By the time the shooting was over, five Black September terrorists and all nine Israeli hostages were dead. Terrorism was in the world to stay. Over the next 30 years, different terrorists, hoping for different kinds of change, would launch many campaigns of terror. The most well-known terrorist groups in the world came from the Middle East. In 1964, the Palestine Liberation Organization was formed in the Arab state of Jordan. At first, the PLO was a political organization. It wanted to form a new homeland for the Palestinian Arabs who had been forced to leave their homes in Palestine when their land was claimed by Israel. After the Six-Day War, when Israel took land away from four other Arab nations, the PLO realized that Israel would never give up any land to form a country for Palestinian Arabs. Israel seemed much more likely to claim as much land as possible than to keep it for Israelis. So members of the PLO formed other groups, terrorist groups. Their goal was to attack crowds of Israelis, not just crowds of soldiers, but also civilian men, women, and children. If enough Israelis died, perhaps the Israeli people would force the Israeli government to give land to the Arabs. These terrorist groups also wanted the rest of the world to know what they were doing. They hoped that other countries would recognize their demands and help pressure the Israelis into giving up land. So the terrorists didn't just make attacks, 
They called international newspapers and explained who had carried out the attack and what they wanted, something called claiming responsibility. If the terrorists could get their demands in newspapers and on television, people all over the world might see, understand, and sympathize. The Black September attack at the Olympics was an attempt to get international attention. The Olympics was one of the most famous events in the world. Camera crews, newspaper reporters, TV anchors, and thousands of other news gatherers attended the games. When the Black September attack was broadcast on television, half a billion people watched it. Afterwards, a spokesman for the PLO-related group called the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine told a reporter, The choice of the Olympics was like painting the name of Palestine on a mountain that can be seen from the four corners of the earth. Another group that gave birth to terrorism was the IRA, the Irish Republican Army. You may remember that the Irish Republican Army was organized by the Irish nationalist group Sinn Féin to fight for an Ireland independent of Great Britain. When most of Ireland was made into the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland remained part of the British Empire. Hoping to reunite Northern Ireland with the rest of the Irish Republic, the IRA turned from being an army to being a terrorist group. Instead of attacking or challenging the British government alone, the IRA planted bombs in England to terrify the English into wanting to get rid of Northern Ireland. By 1969, the IRA had begun to reject terrorism. But some of its members thought that terrorism was the only way to ever get Northern Ireland back for the Irish Republic. They split off and formed a new organization called the Provisional Irish Republican Army. The PIRA attacked the English in Northern Ireland, but it also planted bombs in English pubs and businesses, along London streets and in subways. The bombs killed innocent men, women, and teenagers. In 1978, the PIRA managed to put a bomb on a fishing boat that belonged to Lord Mountbatten, the cousin of Queen Elizabeth. Lord Mountbatten was nearly 80 years old. He had fought in both World War I and World War II, and he had even been the Viceroy of India back when India was still British. When the bomb blew up the boat, Lord Mountbatten, his grandson, and two other people were killed. Irish and Palestinian terrorist groups planned many of the terrorist attacks of the 1970s, but every country in the world has had its terrorists. Before 1948, Jewish terrorists killed British civilians in Palestine to try to scare Britain out of occupying Palestine. Terrorists in Spain have tried to get the Spanish government to declare a territory in the north, where a people called the Basque live, free of Spanish rule. Greek terrorists, Italian terrorists, Indian terrorists, and American terrorists have all killed and set off bombs to try to get their way. Invasion of another country begins one kind of war. After invasions, armies and leaders clash with each other, trying to decide who will finally have power. But terrorism is another kind of war, one that changes forever the lives of those who have nothing to do with politics.